Welcome to Ann Sachs. We are here today to give you some tips about all things tile. We're so excited. There are lots of topics to cover, including color, size, application, what grout to use, grout, all patterns. sorts of things. So tune in. Here we have some examples of tiles that we personally like and we think that a lot of you might like. What we're gonna do is go through this long line of tile and identify why we picked it, why we liked it, and where we could use it. So here we picked these tiles because one, we think they just look really good together. You've got the matte and the glossy, but also we just love the shape. This yeah. is a really interesting shape and what do you call this, emulation? Well, this the undulations. Undulation, emulation. But, so you've got terrazzo in there, the speckles, and then you've got this concrete ceramic situation happening here. So those undulations make it difficult for underfoot and they also can make it difficult for cleaning. I've used this in a backsplash of a kitchen or it'd be red in a really cool oh, wall yeah. accent in a bathroom. And then you would add your glossy selection here maybe in the shower. Somewhere easier to clean with different lines but you're kind of bringing out the blues and grays in this tile out of the terrazzo that's there. Yeah, it's beautiful. This tile is really interesting because it has pattern. It's also pretty neutral, but we really wanted to pull this dark color out in the other wall. You know, so you picked in that this because you think it looks pretty cool. It looks kind of old world. You can see this is a ceramic tile and it just kind of, oh, there's our paper. It's okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, it's kind of cool when you're selecting tile. Again, Wendy just liked it, and so she picked it. You then address how and where it's appropriate to use it. So this ceramic tile is kind of this old vibe, but it's so cool because you can make it modern and take it a notch up if you add a more flat or modernized tile, because wouldn't we all agree that that's more contemporary and this is more, what's that word, encaustic? Yeah, good for me. Encaustic. So this is a more encaustic tile. We'll define that later. Anyways, this modernizes it, so it's kind of cool. So one thing about ceramic tiles and encaustic tiles is you can see that the color is here on the top and the rest of the tile is ceramic on the inside, right? So what's gonna happen when that sucker chips? What's gonna show through? Our cute little beige and black stripe? Negative. What's gonna come through is that ceramic kind of clay color, and you need to be either okay with that, and if you're not, you shouldn't be getting an encaustic tile. So this one we picked because we love the terrazzo. We love the neutral feel, but it has some color coming through, like this dark gray yeah, it's so pretty. and this burnt orange color. So we paired this with some darker blues that pick up this color. And just having a smaller shape here with a really large piece of stone just adds more dimension. So for me, I kind of like to go crazy on the floor and then have everything else kind of talk to that. So for me, this Ansex Brulee tile would be kind of a terrazzo vibe updated because terrazzo is usually tiny little specks normally when you see it in mid-century modern. And they've kind of taken a twist on it and added the chunkier pieces of stone. And I would put this all over the floor, in a mudroom, in a bathroom. There's tons of places. And then on the wall, in the shower. But these are just options. I could use one of these two to dress it up and clean it up. Again, kind of a lot of activity and then a little bit more solid. Obviously a good choice in this situation would be solid and busy versus busy and busy. One thing I wanna note is this is a concrete tile and this is a similar look and if you can't really see it on camera but this is almost looks printed. It's a porcelain tile and it's made to look like a real stony stony and it's not. But the reason why people like it, A, it's cheaper. Secondly, is that if it does chip or do, like if you're using it in a mudroom or something, the color that's here is gonna shine through. So the wear and tear will not show as much on a through tile as it would something that's encaustic or concrete. Okay, you're up. I didn't pick this one. <gasps> she but doesn't want I to can talk, talk about, about it. it. No, I can't, I just. No, you don't like no, it. No, it's fine. I love it. <laughs> you talk about it. <laughs> Wendy doesn't like this. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is a marble. Again, marble is a little bit softer, chippy dippy. You just gotta live with it. It's totally fine. If I drop my, you know, ponds or my Clinique lotion on this, it's not gonna chip. But if I drop a hammer, if I'm doing a repair, it will chip. So marble, my whole feeling in life is whatever we install, whether it be a career marble countertop or a marble floor, just live with it. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to not be perfect. So if it chips, say la vie, it's still pretty. So anyways, this is a marble. Again, I would use this on the floor, gorgeous, gorgeous. 
And if I was feeling crazy and green, yes, I would pair it. Wendy's Comfort Zone would probably keep it crisp and super clean with a white matte tile because matte has less light reflection, it has less going on, it's cleaner, it kind of absorbs the vibe, whereas this is busy and pretty and colorful. So again, your wall tile, you wanna do busy and mellow, busy and mellow. And then we have this paired with a super smaller repeat tile. And Wendy, what did we learn about why we use small tiles in the shower pan? What's required in the shower? Well, because there's a slope. So you want to make sure you have small tiles so then they can actually go down. Yes. So the go tile up. installer needs two inch size or smaller to install tile on a slope. He can't use these big pieces because they don't bend. You can kind of imagine that. So we always have our struggle. We have a great look for a bathroom and then we're like, oh crap, what are we going to use on the pan? It's got to be two inches or less. So if you don't have something that matches, you can find something that looks good and then you have to tie the whole sucker together, right? So in this one, we really love this tile. And so we were trying to find something that we thought we could pair with it. And you know, so, this so is pretty. very much a tone on tone look. You're really just taking the color here, the same exact color and repeating it elsewhere. We love the way that these two look together. Yeah, this is a two by two Z-Lige or how do you pronounce it? Z-Lige. Uh, Tons of people sell it. It tends to be a little bit pricier. Again, this guy, Chippy Dippy, he's made to look like old world Italian. Like when these corners chip, even at install by the tile installer, uh, he's going to chip them and we're going to be okay with it because we're going to fill it in with grout. But the Zeelish tile has a ceramic inside. So again, these might chip and you just have to live with it. So don't put it in a place that could be chippy. So the wall application is more appropriate, less chipping probability than a floor, right? So this would be a great application for a wall. And this is a marble set and that's just gorgeous and so pretty. Now, blush, Wendy. Blush is very on trend right now. Would you be scared about installing blush in a bathroom or a kitchen right now? That's a really hard question. I think it depends. I mean, I couldn't do that because my husband would say no. And it depends on the client, right? Like if they really love this color and it's a color they think they could live with for 10 to 20 years, yeah. then yeah, I would do it. But this would definitely be like a riskier combo in it a project. Would. I mean, I love it. What I tell my clients, it's really bad news. Are you ready? What I tell them every time is don't worry. Whatever we pick today, you're, you're going to hate, hate it, it in 10, 10 years. years. So I would say absolutely go for it because we're going to want to remodel our bathroom anyways when blush is like not even. But a if thing you anymore. really like this tile, then you could just do this in white and yeah, that would last a lot longer. And it mm -hmm. would be take the pressure off a little yeah. bit, right? So here we are with a marble. Are we, we're not Carrera, we're Calcutta. Oh God, Calcutta, Carrera, whatever. So marble is like everyone's go-to because they think it's elegant and it's pretty and it's timeless and it is. You literally cannot go wrong with marble. But how do you sass it up a little bit with a fun shape in your, where do we use that? In the pan because it's two inches or less. So that would be a super fun way to sass up and modernize using marble on the walls or floor. That could go in your pan. That little cross design could go on an accent wall in your shower. It could be the entire backsplash of your vanity with the marble on the floor and it just could be a stunning look. If you wanted to take the safe route, we go back to snooze, snooze then you lose, we do the hex in the Calcutta and Bob's your uncle. I mean, just, it's fine. Like you can do it, it'll look great and it's beyond timeless. Blushy Washy is gonna go out of style, but this guy is gonna be good for 20 years and you'll never get your husband to redo the bathroom. So if you do that, you're toast for 20 years. One thing we like to talk about is when we're explaining tile selections to clients, we say, you have to be careful about trying too hard and picking like all these crazy things because when it comes down to it, you have hardware on your cabinets, you have your cabinet wood, you have plumbing, you have all sorts of things that are going to be adding to the look of your tile. So if you can brace yourself at all to be less is more in your tile selections, that's good because look what happens when I add, I mean they didn't have a freestanding brass faucet or black, so we're just going to go to polish nickel. Look what happens immediately to this tile when you put in a polished nickel faucet. Dresses it up, tons of light reflection, blah, blah, blah. Same thing here. Oh my gosh, but I'm so Beautiful. scared. It's so dark and stormy. Imagine if this was on your shower wall and that's on your floor and this is your shower head finish. Imagine, look at how much that lightens it up and makes it 
totally splashy. So don't be scared of your dark tiles because plumbing is going to happen. And look at how classy that looks. Like I would choose polished nickel in this scenario over brass all day long. So just as a reminder, plumbing, your hardware, and all the metal finishes in your bathroom also add to all these looks. Well, and don't forget, bath mats, towels, those also add character and texture and color. 100%. So there's lots of things that you can do beyond just tile to get a fun look in your bathroom. Yeah, let's take a look somewhere else. So we're here today with Jeremy from Ansax Portland, and we just want to hear more about you and Ansax and this beautiful tile that's made here in Portland. Absolutely. So uh, we are a Portland-based company. We do make tile here in Portland, but we're now 20 stores strong across the country. So there's an Ansax tile near you, but it is made here. Wow, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So our whole deal is pick a shape you like, pick a color you like. We have over 90 colors that we hand make here in town. We want it to be unique to your home, not the same thing that your neighbor has in their kitchen. Uh, you can get super playful with the design and the color, but it has just really pretty texture and variation in it that you wouldn't get out of a machine-made tile. So. And these custom tiles range from anywhere from 20 to about $50 a square foot, so there's something yep. in a more comfortable okay. price point. So what are some of these tiles made out of? What materials? Yeah, so the tiles that Ansax produces are actually ceramic clay tiles. We only have a ceramic factory, Okay. but we source beautiful stone and porcelain and other things from all over the world. Yeah, okay. Do artists live here that are designing some of these tiles and shapes or how does that work? Yeah, so we actually have an in-house designer in Portland who's sketching, hand carving designs. Cool. Oh, that's um, so cool. They have an office in our factory and are designing in-house. But we also work with uh, designers around the country like Kelly Wurstler. Yeah, you have um, collaborations as McGee. well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's great. So, so here's an example of a tile that you know, a client might like, and they can choose whether or not they want it glossy or they want it matte. Exactly, right? we would have something for every project. And then just to point out something, a lot of tiles that we talked about earlier today come on a sheet, and these are free tiles. So you would have to come up with your design and the tile installer would have to lay these out accordingly, right? That's exactly right. They're loose tiles, but that gives you the option to make playful designs. That's great. The quick 101 is tile is set on mortar. In between the tile to marry the joists, you put in grout. And there, ding, 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 is a design decision because you have lots of colors of grout to choose from. And Wendy, what do you see here? Here you can see a lighter tile. They've chosen a darker grout. Here with this darker tile, they've chosen a lighter grout. Sometimes with a lighter grout, they get dirty faster. So it's just something that you wanna keep in mind. Like maybe on the back side of a shower, you could go with a lighter one, but on the floor, you might wanna go with a darker. Right, there's lots of different grout companies and you wanna do your homework and pay for the higher end grout that's more deterrent of mold and discoloration. And by the way, if you have teenagers, they pee in the shower. So you wanna put good grout on the pan. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Husbands pee too. So Jeremy, what is one of the biggest questions you get about grout? Yeah, many of our customers ask us if they could have the tightest possible grout lines I think generally because they don't want to have to clean their grout. But yeah. do remember that grout lines protect your tile from cracking. So to have a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of space, uh, keeps your tile safe for years to Wait, crack. what do you mean it protects your tile from cracking? Do you mean at time of install or in its life? In its life, as a house or a project settles really? over time, um, they get closer together. Your tiles can get closer together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, la dee da. Uh, this is called a grout deck. And again, you have to either go to your tile store or go to the place that supplies grout and you go there and make sure that you have this with all your samples. When we begin to pick grout, you take a grout deck like this and you just start vibing on like, do you want it to be an accent to the tile or do you want to try and match it? So one thing to note, if you wanted to match the grout to your tile color. There's not a lot of blue grout in the world, but you can get it custom colored and custom made. So just know that's a thing if you wanna do that. But whites are no joke. So you just start holding stuff up. The, the whiter it goes, the bluer it goes. Like, so for me, this one matches that. And for me, that one matches that. You know, kind of like Wendy talked about. you might want contrast. Yeah. You know, you might want. <clears throat> well, you, you can just leave it in there. <laughs> 
you know, you might want dark in yeah. between the light. This alone looks like a sky blue to me. It's kind of poopy. But when you put it with the grout, the grout lines will technically be a little narrower than that. That color really goes away quite a bit and melds in pretty nicely. Again, unless you wanted to do a contrast. Okay, two things to say about porcelain tile when you are shopping it out. One, porcelain tile is usually less money, price per square foot. Number two, it's there's some through tile porcelain tiles, which means, again, we learned earlier that the color is through the tile. Most of these porcelain tiles are actually printed, it's kind of weird, on the tile to create the color, the pattern, the texture. The texture, rather, is added by the fabricator. So if I were to touch some of these, I might feel some, you know, faux texture. It's a porcelain tile made to feel like stone, right? Here's where things get really wonky. When tile people try to make wood floors, you should be scared, be very scared. When you buy floor tile that looks like wood, it could look really cheesy. Why would you do that? Why would you buy floor tile that looks like wood? Obviously because it's not gonna warp, it's not gonna scratch like wood, it's way more durable than a soft wood, right? But what gets really crazy is the less money you spend on a faux wood tile, it's gonna look as crappy as it sounds. But if you buy it at Ann Sachs, as you can see here, it looks really good. Where it gets a little bit, for me, is the grout lines, it looks super fake, right? So if I were gonna do wood porcelain tile, faux wood or porcelain tile that looks like wood, I would do grout lines that are literally the same color as the tile. To me, this looks way better than that. Here we are in the shower at Ann Sachs. <laughs> Don't forget to talk to your tile installer or a designer at whatever tile store you go to about which tiles work in wet spaces versus dry spaces. Yeah, good point. And this is the Zilege that we saw earlier in the blush color. And this tile they used on the wall because we talked about four reasons why you wouldn't want to use this on the floor. We learned them today. One is the floor pan tile needs to be two inches or smaller. That's a four inch. Number two is it's glossy and we don't want a gloss on the floor because it's slipping. Number three is the undulations of this tile is probably uncomfortable and could be a cutting factor for your feet. Number four is the chipping because this tile we learned is a ceramic and it could chip. Thank you so much for coming today with us to Ann Sachs to watch our YouTube about tile. We hope you learned something new. Don't DM forget, us. Yeah, DM ask us. Questions. Subscribe, follow, share. And don't forget we have blogs that talk about tile as well. Yes, there's a lot to learn. Stay tuned. Just don't turn on the water because this works. Does it really? No. This salam oh, this salami. Here we are in the shower at Ann Sachs. It's getting it's going from bad it's to getting worse. Weird. Yeah.